Boston, 1774. Tensions rise in the British colony of Massachusetts between the colonists and the crown. A cloud of uncertainty lingers over the people of Boston as every day more and more begin to distrust the British soldiers. This had come to a head in December of the previous year when members of a patriot fraternity known as the Sons of Liberty boarded a British merchant ship and dumped 342 chests of tea into the Boston Harbor. This enraged the British Parliament, who quickly responded with the enforcement of the Coercive Acts, better known as the Intolerable Acts. The new laws enacted on the American colonists were controversial to say the least. They called for a blockade of the Boston Harbor that began June 1st of 1774 and completely shut down the port. But the acts didn't end there. They banned all exports from the colonies to foreign powers, limited imports to only essentials from the British merchants, forced the colonists to quarter troops, and greatly limited the amount of self-governance the people of Massachusetts would have. And to oversee this all, King George III appointed the General of the British Army in the Americas, General Thomas Gage, as the mayor of the Massachusetts colony. One of these four intolerable acts, the Massachusetts Government Act, was particularly threatening to the status of self-governance by the colonists. The act declared that Boston was under mob rule and it would bring order to the colony. It fundamentally changed the Massachusetts Council, which was an elected body of 28 officials who held major political power and made all of the members now appointed by the crown. This drastic reduction of the people's independence enraged many citizens who rejected the council. Colonists across Massachusetts became uneasy and worried that the tension would lead to more than just words, so they began planning for the worst. Slowly they began to move their weapons and powder from the town storage houses to safeguard their defenses. One of these storehouses was the Provincial Powder House in Charlestown, a town just north of Boston. Gage, in an attempt to dull hostilities, wanted to take the weapons and powder from the town storage houses so that they would not be used against his own forces. So Gage sent Major Brattle off to get an inventory of the nearby Charlestown Powder House. When he arrived, there were only 250 half barrels left and decided that it would be best to take the powder back to Boston so it couldn't be taken by the colonists. On September 1st, 1774, Gage sent 250 British soldiers to receive the powder kegs and sweep the town for other large weapons. The soldiers successfully removed the powder, and in their search they found two small field guns in the local militia's possession. They finished up their operation by about noon of that day and headed back to Boston. The people of Charlestown were not happy about the operation, so they began to spread word of the event. The news spread quickly through the farmlands and colony, and each telling only exaggerated the crimes of the British soldiers. Some were told that the British soldiers had shot six men. Others heard that the Navy had fired upon the town and leveled the seaport. By that afternoon, around 4,000 militiamen had gathered in Charlestown, and the next morning a protest had begun against the Royal Navy. Upon learning that the rumors were false, they then protested the council to get several of them to step down and succeeded. Unexpectedly, the crowd disappeared with minimal violence and thus ending the powder alarm of 1774. Though this was the end of the alarm, this was only the beginning of a greater story. The actions taken by both sides started the colonies down a path that would only lead to one thing, revolution. General Gage had seen for the first time that the local militia was more organized than he previously thought. Gage instantly fortified the Boston Neck. He would also write to England for reinforcements, asking for as many as he could get. He only received from that letter 400 Marines. The Bostonians responded to the larger presence of British forces by setting up a spy network that would report on their movements. One member was a silversmith by the name of Paul Revere. Later that month, 
Patriots would set up the Massachusetts Provincial Congress, who quickly set up a system of alarms and communication. They also decided that future military storehouses should be in towns west of Boston to keep them away from the British. Lastly, they raised a force of 12,000 militia Minutemen, who were trained to be ready at a minute's notice. Though the Provincial Congress tried to keep its inner workings a secret, word of the militia storage sites still made it to General Gage through a spy. The stage was set, and all eyes were on Boston. No one knew exactly what would happen next, but they all thought that they would be prepared for it. But unbeknownst to all, the journey down a long and winding path had already been started, and no one would be ready. Ready? 